Is anybody ready to praise God tonight? Come on. Let's put those hands together just like this. Hey. Here we go. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Come on, you believe that tonight? I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven And all my praise belongs to you forever And we sing, come on This is my testimony from dead to life Cause grace rewrote my story I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony. This is my testimony. All right, come together. Come together, sons and daughters. Bought with blood and washed in water. Oh, sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Finish what he started. Yes, he will. Come on. Our God will finish what he started. Yeah. This is my testimony from there to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. Not testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. You're not done. Greater things are still to come. Come on, you believe that tonight? Hey, if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Yeah, greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're
you walk past the table of message notes and connect cards. If you didn't get one, I'm going to encourage you, go get one right now. It's not rude. I won't be offended. Don't worry. Go get one right now because Pastor Gary is actually going to highlight the connect card and those notes in his message. So you're going to want it. And if you're a VIP, you want that connect card anyways because you get a free gift by going outside. But right now, we're going to continue in worship. And here's what I love about worship. It's a time when we get our eyes off of us. We focus on the Lord and through our singing, through our actions, and through our time, we just give it all to Him. So will you guys pray with me right now? Lord, we just come to you in this moment, and we do. We cast our cares on you. We cast all our worries on you. Everything we walked in here with, Lord, we set that aside to just put all the attention on you. I thank you so much for who you are, God. And right now, we just want to give you this offering of praise and this moment of all our attention and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. All right, let's worship together. Come on, sing this with me. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. He's my living hope today. He's the reason I lift my voice. Come on, sing it with faith. Hallelujah. Praise the one who saved me. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope, Jesus Christ, my living hope. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Come on, let's sing this out together. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. By surrendering. Fight my battles. This is how. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to read something to you guys out of the Word of God. 
This is from 1 Kings chapter 18. Let me give you a little context here. There was, there was a great drought in the land of Israel and it was three, three and a half years into this drought. They had not seen rain in three and a half years. And the prophet Elijah, he went to the top of Mount Carmel to pray. While he was there, he said to his servant, go up and look toward the sea. So the servant went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And Elijah said, go back, look again. He did this seven times and every time, nothing. There's nothing. On the seventh time, the servant came back and he said, behold, there's a cloud as small as a man's hand is forming up from the sea. Elijah said, go, prepare your chariot and go down so that the heavy shower does not stop you. In a little while, the sky grew black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy shower. Ahab rode and went to Jezreel and then the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he outran the horses and the chariots. Elijah ran 17 miles outrunning horses and chariots because he was ready for rain. He was ready for rain. Church, I believe that a lot of us in here, we're going through a dry season. And I don't mean financially. I don't mean, um, I don't mean successes. Cause you can have all the success in the world and still have a dry spirit. For those of you, those of you guys that don't know, five years ago, I was living my dream. I was in Nashville, Tennessee. I was touring in buses. I signed a record deal. I was touring with bands that I grew up listening to. All my dreams came true and yet my spirit was dry. So I'm here to tell you folks that it is possible to live on a mountaintop and still be in a dry season. But that changes today. That's right. Are you ready for rain church? Say it with me, say it, I'm ready for rain. Say, let me hear you. Come on, New Walk. I'm ready for rain. So this is what we're gonna do. You can't receive anything if your heart and hands are closed. If I wanted to give you something, you can't take it if your hand's closed. That's right. So that's what I want you guys to do. I want us to put our hands in the air and I want us to open our hands. If you feel comfortable doing this, if you're ready for rain, if you're ready for that dry season to be over and you're ready for God to give you whatever it is he has prepared for you, whether that's a blessing or the next step or the next assignment, folks, let's put our hands in the air and let's sing this next song together. I'm ready for rain. Are you ready for rain, New Walk? New Walk. Thunder. Oh, yeah. Come on, new one. Come on. We make a joyful noise. Amen, church. You may be seated. this weekend. If you're online, fill out the connect card. There's a link below. If you are watching here in person, the connect card, you have it in your hands. You can take that outside to the awning, but we're so glad that you guys are here. Now, in case you didn't know, it is group season here at New Walk. We want you to get connected in any kind of group, be it a virtual group where you're just at home and you're connecting with people online, or maybe a group where you meet and you go fishing together, or you play volleyball. All of our groups are available. They're launching next week, and we want you to get connected and have community with people. So be sure to stop by the connect area outside in the lobby or sign up online. That's another way to do it. But we've got some other big events coming up too. First off, this weekend, Boot camp is happening. It's a way for you to get connected and serving somewhere here on campus. And so is YA. YA is our young adults event. It's happening Sunday night. You don't want to miss that. And then, of course, all of our kids are super excited for Lit Party. This is for our students 6 through 12. 
this is just a great night. Crazy lights, fun, games, worship, black lights. You're going to want to be here. So that's happening on Wednesday night. And then beach baptism is coming up at the end of the month. So if you're interested in beach baptism, maybe you want to get more information, just go to our website, newwalk.church forward slash baptism. You can sign up, you can register for the class, or you can just find out more details about when it is and what's happening. So we're about to get into our service, but as always, prayer is so important and we want to be able to pray for you. It's the lifeblood of our church. It's how we stay connected to our Heavenly Father. So whether it be texting or filling out that Connect card, let us pray for you. And then of course, giving. Thank you so much to all of you who have been faithfully giving through this season. It is because of your faithfully giving that we're able to still do church, that our lights are on, that we are able to reach so many people online. If you guys are watching online, it's because of your giving that we're even able to reach each and every one of you every single weekend. So thank you so much for giving. We're so excited about this series because let's face it, we are all in a season, a season of life that has been uncomfortable at times, but we know that the Lord is in it with us. So we're excited for Pastor Gary's message today in our new series. Let's check it out. Okay, everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining us here live. We got a group here live. Thanks for joining us. Got some people watching online as well. This is uh, a continuation of our series called Seasons. I'm going to get into that here in a second. I just want to remind our young adults that are watching online or here live, uh, you have an opportunity to have a gathering, talked about it, Shannon did a little bit. We're talking about an event that's taking place, our once a month gatherings on Sunday night. So I want to make sure our young adults are being a part of that. Of course, ultimately, young adults, you understand that it's in the small groups where you want to get more richly connected. It's going to be a huge part of your spiritual growth, and we'd love to have you uh, join a small group as well. They'll be talking more about that tomorrow night at the YA event. In, in the physical realm here on earth, we have spring, summer, winter, fall, those seasons, but we said last week, it's okay to say, hey, I'm in a spiritual season. The Bible backs that up. It is possible to be in all kinds of spiritual seasons in your life, uh, all different ones, and we're going to share some of them each of the weeks of this series, but this week I thought it would be good to start in one of really the best seasons you could be in, and that's called a season of growth. Seasons of growing. We want to be in seasons of growing. I think sometimes, uh, maybe especially right now in our country and especially amongst the believers, they would say, man, I don't feel like I'm growing right now. I don't feel like I'm growing spiritually right now. And, and I get that. I get that some people would say that they feel like maybe they're a little bit dry right now in their life. All, all living things that God has made were created to to grow, but they don't grow all the time, right? A plant shows a growth on the outside and bearing of fruit and healthy growth, usually a couple seasons a year, maybe spring and summer, right? But the plant goes dormant on the outside. It goes dormant in the fall and in the winter. It is possible for you as a believer to have a sense that you are going through a dormant season. I will say this, even in the fall and the winter, many plants grow beneath the surface and develop some roots, though on the outside they're not showing uh, much healthiness because of that dry season, that dormant season. Underneath there's growing taking place. And what I want to share with you in our time together is that really, uh, though we might not feel like we're in one of these growth spurts, especially on the outside, spiritually bearing fruit spiritually the way that maybe we want, we can still be taking some very intentional steps to grow under the surface. I talked last week about planting seeds in all seasons. You can be planting seeds of growth, opportunities of growth, even during seasons where you feel like maybe it's just a little bit dry. By the way, Dry seasons can be very powerful spiritually because oftentimes in non-dry seasons, we'll use words like this, I just feel so close to God. I feel like, oh, I feel like I'm growing. I feel, we'll use the words feel, fe the word feeling, feel. We'll say things like that. And then oftentimes when we're in a dry season, we'll say, I don't feel feel close to God. I don't, some of you are saying that right now, I don't feel close. I don't feel like I'm growing. Listen, if all of our faith was about feelings, there wouldn't be faith. There are seasons where you don't feel it, but there are still steps that you can take, and that's faith. 
faith over feelings. That's a big part of what we have to do to grow. If we're going to grow, we've got to have faith at times where maybe it seems very dark. God gives us opportunities to grow at all different times in our life. God wants you as a believer He wants you to grow up. He wants you to grow up in maturity. If a child doesn't grow up physically, what a tragedy that would be for the child to not grow up. What a tragedy it would be for you spiritually to always be stuck and to never grow up. God wants you to grow up physically, but he also wants you to grow up emotionally. He wants you to grow up spiritually. Ephesians 4.14, I love how this translation puts it. It says this, we are not meant to remain as children at the mercy of every chance wind of teaching, but we are meant to hold firmly to the truth in love and to grow up in every way into Christ the head. God wants us to grow and become more and more like Jesus. In Christ is how we become more and more like Jesus. It's how we're going to learn to act more like Christ, feel more like Christ, talk more like him in our lives. It is through Jesus that we get the model of what we ought to be seeking after in our growth seasons. We're going to spend a lot of time kind of understanding and unpacking how to make the most of opportunities to grow. One of the things that's very frustrating to me as a pastor over the years uh, that I've seen taking place um, is, is people coming into the church and never growing spiritually. There are people, not just this church, the churches all over America and around the world, who have been going to church for 10 20, 30, 40 years of their life, and they don't grow. They're still the same kind of cranky, self-righteous, critical, unloving, jealous, envious, gossiping people as they always were. They're never growing. The Bible tells me that as your pastor, my job is to be a shepherd. I shepherd you. One of the things the shepherd does is guide you to healthiness, guide you to healthy living, guide you to where to get the food. That's what the shepherd, one of the things he's involved in. I can't force you to eat. I can't force you to strive after health. I can't force you to remain in the flock. I can do everything, but if you want to run off or you don't want to eat or you don't want to take spiritual growth steps, that is going to ultimately be your choice. But my job, as I understand it and through what the scriptures tell me about the responsibility that I have when I stand before God, I don't know if you know that, pastors have a special standing for their flock before God. My job as your pastor is to make sure that you have, in essence, the buffer on the table so that then you can choose to grow or, sadly, for some people, choose not to grow. At our church, we have always wanted to give you those opportunities to grow. I think there's sometimes there, there's critics of our church, and they misunderstand what our church is about all the time, and, and so I don't have time to get into that, but I hear sometimes people, people will say, well, New Walk is that church that really just cares about, like, getting new believers. You know, they, uh, they just always want to see people saved, and honestly, if that's all we we're about, that's still pretty great, you know, seeing lost people come to know Jesus, but, but it, and it is true by the way, that we've had hundreds and now thousands of baptisms at our church. It is true that we've seen thousands of people at our church come to know Jesus Christ, and I praise God for that. But let me tell you what sometimes people miss about our church, is that throughout our history now, for 14 years, there have been thousands of next steps that people have taken in obedience to God. We have seen hundreds and now thousands of people grow in their spiritual journey here at our church. Something we are known for as a church, people growing into maturity spiritually. I love that, that some of you have grown spiritually here at this church. But not everybody has. Colossians 1.28, we continue to preach Christ to each person using all wisdom to warn and to teach everyone. Why are we doing it? In order to bring each one into God's presence as a mature person in Christ. One day you're going to stand before God having, maybe, Lord willing, having spent many years in the church. Are you going to stand before him having, having many years in the church and many years as a believer in Christ still in your baby diaper? Spiritually. 
I mean, how bad would it be to spend 5, 10, 20 years in the church and still be in a baby diaper spiritually? Yet, that is the way it is for many people who call themselves believers. In order to grow, you've got to understand what causes growth, and part of my time really is going to be helping you with that, but I wrote this in your notes. You've also got to understand some of the myths that are out there about spiritual growth versus the facts, and so I wrote these down in your notes. You have them as well. The first myth is this, is that growth is automatic. Somehow, by osmosis, I'll just grow. No, no, growth is not automatic. It is absolutely a choice. Uh, another myth is this. It can be instant. You know what? The fact is, is almost all the time, it is a gradual process. Uh, another myth is that I can grow by just attending the church. Here's the fact. You grow by developing habits. Another myth is that I can attain it by myself. Here's a fact. You can't grow without others. Here's a myth. Uh, it's my, my spiritual growth is measured by my beliefs. Here's a fact. Your spiritual growth is measured by your beliefs and how that plays out in your behavior. Not just being heroes of the word, but doers of the word. Another myth is, you know what, I, I, my spiritual growth is all about how I act at church. No, no, we can put on a show at church. It's about what's happening at home and in your daily lives. So we, we just, I just wanted to unpack some of those facts and, and some of those myths that people have out there. How do you know when you have reached a level of maturity spiritually? The Bible says you start to bear fruit. There's five different ways the Bible talks about bearing fruit, and I don't have time to go too far into these, but I'll just give you these five. The Bible talks about that you and I can bear fruit in our words. We can bear fruit in our thoughts, our mind. We can bear fruit in our actions or our character or behavior. Uh, we can bear fruit in our emotions, and we can bear fruit by leading others into relationship with Jesus Christ and helping them grow spiritually five different ways to bear fruit. Spiritual maturity is found when you and I are bearing fruit in all of these different ways in our lives. So let me give you, I want to give you some laws of spiritual growth. Like even when you're not feeling it, some things you can be doing in faith to continue to grow or to plant seeds or to dig the roots down a little bit deeper, preparing yourself for future growth. Seven laws of spiritual growth. If you want to be in a season of growth, find yourself in a season of growth or put the roots down for one in the future. Here it is. The first one is this. Spiritual growth is intentional. It's not accidental. It's intentional. I mentioned just a minute ago, it's a choice. You've got to intend to grow. You've got to choose to grow. You've got to be all about the desire to grow. I wrote it down in my notes like this. I think it's in yours. A season of growth comes when you take steps. When you take a step to advance, when you say, okay, you know what? I, I, want, to keep, I want to keep growing. I wrote this down in my notes. Listen, everybody in this room, everybody watching online, Right now, you are as close to God as you want to be. You're saying, oh, oh God, I, f I feel like I don't have the, feel the presence of God right now in my life. Wh who moved? You or him? He didn't. It's all about your choices and your decisions. Look, in other words, you own this. Don't blame this on your wife if you're not growing spiritually. Don't blame it on your husband if you're not growing spiritually, don't blame it on your kids. Don't blame it on your parents. Don't blame the church. You are as close to God as you choose to be. If you don't feel close to God right now, then you've got to take a step to say, okay, you know what? God, I want, I want to make another step. I want to make another step of growth. I'm praying that during our time together today, you'll want to take some steps of growth. I hope that you came to this service not wanting to stay the same. I believe you wouldn't waste an hour of your life coming to church, being a part of a church weekend service so that you can just leave here and do the same. I believe everybody should want to take a step of growth. If you stand before God one day as a believer in your spiritual diapers, don't you go blame somebody else. Man up about it and say, you know what, I cared more about my golf game than I did growing spiritually. Just man up about it. I cared more about this, I cared more about that than growing spiritually. Don't 
go blaming others. Take the step. Take the responsibility. Grow by making commitments. Now, our goal as a church has always been to move people into more uh, commitments. Why? Because it's it, it's opportunity for growth. It's how you grow spiritually. So we're doing things, and, and I'm going to share something that we do. I'm going to share something that we do behind the scenes. I'm going to share it publicly with you online and here live that we're constantly about the business of doing with people uh, in our community and ultimately here in the church. We basically are constantly moving them into deeper levels of commitment. We got a little thing that's in your notes, uh, these little, what they're called is concentric circles. And on the outside of that is the community. And then you see the crowd, then, then it moves into the congregation, then it moves into the committed, and then it moves into the core. Maybe in my time here in just a second, you'll figure out where you fit on one of those rings and, and, and say, okay, wh- what do I need to do to kind of to take the next step. What is the community? For us, the community is anybody living around here that our church can reach. People in homes all over East Pasco, that's our community. They go from the community to the crowd when they come here to church for the first time. All anybody has to do to go from the community to the crowd in our minds is to say, I'm gonna attend New Walk Church. So if you're here attending, you've already at least gone from the community to the crowd. Now, we don't want you to stay in just the crowd. We want you to advance into what we call the congregation. But if you choose to just stay in the crowd, here's what people in the crowd do. They just attend. That's it. They attend and and they leave. And you know what? If you're going to stay in the crowd, we're not going to ask anything of you. If that's what you want to do, you just want to attend. Because people in the crowd, they're not ready. They haven't taken the step to really move into the, the level of the congregation. Then somebody says yes to Jesus. They say, okay, I want to be a part of the church. I want to connect with this church. I want to be what they call a member or we call an owner here at our church. You move into what we call the congregation. Now, you start taking a step. You say, okay, I want to be a part of New Walk's new steps. I want to be a part of that or... Maybe you uh, decide you're going you're gonna to be baptized and, and let people know that you're a part of the family of God. But you're taking that step now to move from the crowd to the congregation. If you've never said yes to Jesus, you're kind of still in the crowd. You're attending, but you're still in the crowd. If you've never said, I want to join the work of this church in 101, we do New Steps 101, you're kind of still maybe in the crowd, maybe you're doing some of the things that members and owners do, but you've never said, you know what, I want to make that commitment to grow through 101 and 201 and 301 and 401. And then when people go from the congregation to committed, that's the next level that you have there printed in your notes. Uh, The committed are people who are walking through 201, 301, they're learning steps of maturity. They're learning how to use their time, talent, treasure for the things of God all together the way that God has wired them and they're driving and going into that further and further. And then people who move into the core, these are the people who say, you know what, man, with all that I have and all that I am, God, I am working a process to just serve you and honor you and, and bring glory to you in everything that I'm doing. And this is a, a core of people. Our desire is to see people constantly moving step by step into that core. And by the way, you're not done when you hit the core because if you want to be commissioned now to go out and, and serve at another church, in leadership or serve here at our church in leadership, uh, go start a church, be a pastor, whatever it is, we will commission people as well in that journey. But ultimately, this driving of people from an entry point and then into the depths of their faith is just simply modeling what Jesus did. Folks, if you look at what Jesus did, he tapped the disciples, what were to be the disciples, the fishermen and tax collectors. He said, hey, why just, just come on, just come on and see. You know the disciples. That's what. Hey, just come, just come. Why don't y'all come and see? That was like the beginning. That was like the entry phase. Then, constantly over three and a half years, Jesus turned up the heat, turned up the heat, turned up the heat. Learn more, grow more, uh, learn what it means to follow me, to truly follow me. He constantly is turning up the heat all the way to the point where we get this scripture, and I put it in my notes. If you want to be my disciple, Jesus said, you need to take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. 
That's intense to say, I'm letting go of myself completely, completely, I'm laying everything down, and I am following you, God, with everything. That's what we do when we work those circles and move you to a place of a deeper level of commitment. We're just doing, utilizing the very same tools that Jesus utilized, and we are using all kinds of tools here at our church to help you take those steps of growth in your life. Ephesians 4.13 says this, our tools are ready at hand. This is, I love this translation, how it puts it. At They're ready at hand for clearing the ground, building the lives of obedience and maturity. That's the goal, maturity. Until finally we all believe and become full grown in the Lord. Yes, to the point of being filled full with Christ. Tools is what we utilize constantly. Inside each of these seven laws that I gave you in your notes are these little boxes that that say tools. And I'm gonna be spouting out all kinds of tools over our time together today. We have dozens of tools at our church to help you grow. So you may hear me talk about them and you can write them there. Uh, But here's a really cool tool that we use at our church every week. It's something called the Connect Card. Uh, We got one on the screen there, and I have one here as well. Uh, We give you these because here's what's really cool about these cards. Every week, hundreds of people throughout the history of our church, thousands and thousands of next steps have been taken here in our church through these cards. Incredible steps of obedience have been written on these cards and shared with us, and they've said, you know what? This is a step I'm taking. Hey, Hold me accountable to this step that I'm taking. I want to take this step because, man, it's critical for my life. And we have seen people grow over and over and over through filling out these cards. You're watching online. You can fill one out online as well. Powerful steps in people's journey with God. People say, well, what do I need to fill one of those out if I'm taking a next step? When you get a car loan, you put your signature down and say, I'm good for it. When you get a house loan, you sign and say, I'm good for it. But something even more important, your spiritual growth, you want to sign for it and say, hold me accountable? I mean, come on. You have to choose to really want to grow. Share with us every week your next steps. Again, you didn't come here to just be the same person and leave. You want to grow all the time. So let us know. Say, hey, this is the step that I am taking in my spiritual journey. We give you something else here. It may seem like a little thing. It's called message notes. I know some of you think we give you these to color on, but these are serious things, man. Let me share with you a really sad stat for pastors. You ready? Studies tell us, actually this was an Air Force study, I think it was an Air Force Academy study, that you will forget 95% of what you hear within 72 hours. What a sad thing for a pastor to hear, right? That by Wednesday or Tuesday, you'll forget everything almost that I've shared with you. Ah, but retention goes up to over 50% if you write things down. So I give you these strategically so that you'll write things down and say, oh my gosh, you know what, that applies to me. Oh my gosh, there's a tool there. There's something I need to take home and take this and study and prepare and, and utilize in my spiritual growth message notes. People many times have been guided to go beyond what I've talked about in the message by writing things down in their notes. I wrote this down about writing. Here's what I wrote. The shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. Why has has New Walk had so many people mature? I can tell you they've utilized one tool constantly. They're utilizing message notes over and over again. I wrote this down. If you don't write it down, you may look spiritual, but you ain't hardly learning anything. You're just not. And writing does a lot. Journaling, this is why we journal when we do our Bible reading as well. Here's the next thing in your notes. Spiritual growth is incremental. You grow by working a plan, a plan that God has in your spiritual growth. Incremental growth is how we grow physically, right? When our, when our physical lives, you're born, you, you grow in stages. You grow, in, you, you grow in different stages. Like, like as a newborn baby, one of the first things you do is you learn to eat. Then you learn to walk. Then you talk. 
Uh, you know, you, you take these incremental steps. And almost every baby, it goes exactly the same. Just in time, they're taking these incremental steps uh, regularly to, to advance. Well, the same thing is true spiritually. Like if you were going to go get a diet and exercise plan so that you could get in shape physically, it would be just that. It would be a plan that you would follow day in and day out, and it would bring incremental. You're not going to lose all that weight and get physically fit at once, but incrementally, you will get healthier and healthier. The same thing is true spiritually. You're taking incremental steps constantly to grow time and time again. You're feeling like you're in a season, maybe it's a little dry. Are you still taking incremental steps, planting the seeds to grow? You've got incremental steps spiritually. The first step is you, you get to know him, and then you, you learn to love him, and then you grow in him, and then you serve him, and then you share him. We do incremental steps here at our church. Uh, it's something called new steps. Uh, we have 101, 201, 301, and 401. What I'm going to ask you to do as I'm sharing some of these tools is on the back of your connect card or your message notes right here on the back of these here at the bottom, if you're, uh, you can fill these out online as well. On the very back, I put my growth steps today. As you hear me share something, you're like, you know what, I got, I got to do better with my message notes. Maybe you'll write that there. I'm going to fill out my connect card today. Uh, maybe you've never been in new steps or you need to go to 201 or 301 or 401. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna tell us, hey, this is the step that I want to take. But I also want you to write on your connect card, and here, here's what I just want to invite you to do. If there's one growth step that I share with you today in our time together, just write the word growth on the back of your connect card and circle it. At the end of our time together this week, what we're going to do is we're going to send out a link to every single growth step you could possibly engage in here at our church so that you can do, begin the roadmap to make sure you're doing your part to take the step that you need to take. Write growth on the back of your Connect card. Uh, fill it out online. You're here in the live service. You're going to drop it in the bucket. On your way out, we'll make sure we get you all of the things that you need to know about the growth steps we're talking about today. I'll tell you a, a great growth step to take. A first incremental step as a new believer, get baptized. We got a beach baptism coming up in a few weeks. Some of you have made a decision to say yes to Jesus Christ, but you've never been baptized. You can write growth on the back of your connect card. You can write baptism on the back of your message notes and say, that's a step that I need to take. And in the links that we send you this week, there'll be something about baptism as well. Again, some of you need to take the step to be a part of new steps to keep moving and growing. Here's the third thing that I put in your notes. Growth is personal. In other words, everybody works through a, everybody works through a, a, a path that God has designed specifically for them. What I mean is you are uniquely made. You are, you are not like anybody else on the planet. And because you're uniquely made, God has a unique design purpose plan for you. And so it's not a one size fits all when it comes to spiritual growth. You've got to figure out, you know, okay, God, what is it that you have designed specifically in me? Uh, we do a little work when you go through 201 and 301. It's called shape, and we actually send you with a packet to, to work through that you can begin to discover, you know what, what is the unique path that God has for me? You know, how, how has God shaped me for spiritual growth and for spiritual work in the kingdom of God? Uh, it measures your spiritual gifts, it measures your heart, it measures your ability, your personality, your life experiences, and how you have been shaped, and it sets up a plan uh, for you in your own personal growth. Have you been to 201 and 301? It starts with, with 101, but these are unique opportunities that we, again, people, sometimes people aren't aware. They, they hear about all the people coming to know Jesus Christ. They're not aware of the amount of spiritual growth opportunities that we have, and I just wanted to make them uh, aware to you, available to you, so that you would know. We, I put this scripture in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. It says this, examine yourselves to see whether you are living in the faith. Test yourself. That's what, kind of what we're doing here. Are you taking steps? Are you testing yourself? Are you saying, okay, well, God, what is it I need? I'm examining myself. What is it I need to do to grow further in my life? By the way, one great step of 
Spiritual growth happens when you decide to serve. Some of you are, are, are not serving the body of believers. And I'll say what I always say. There's no scenario in the Scriptures where you don't serve the body of believers. What a great next step for some of you. Some of you have been through boot camp already, and you've dropped off your serve team, and you just need to let your serve team leader know that you're ready to serve again. Others of you have never been to our boot camp that we're having actually tomorrow at 1130 in the cafe. If you've never been to boot camp, and you have an opportunity to go there and say, all right, what do I need to know about serving? And we'll begin to work a plan for where God would want you to serve based on your giftedness. Maybe that's a step that you're going to take. You can, again, write growth on your connection card, you can write serve on the back of your message notes and say, hey, that's a step that I know I need to take. Here's another thing in your notes. Spiritual growth is practical. Spiritual growth is practical. What I mean is there are practical disciplines or what we might call habits that every believer should be utilizing. Habits. When we form good habits, we form spiritually. Let me share with you some great spiritual habits. Uh, One of them would be the habit of spending time, just quiet time with God every day. Another one would be prayer is a great spiritual habit. Bible study is a great spiritual habit. Another great spiritual habit is tithing. Another one is being in a small group regularly. Another one is journaling what God is showing you in your life. These are all spiritual habits, and as you embrace further spiritual habits, you grow further spiritually in character. In fact, I wrote this down in your notes, and It's on the screen as well. Here, they'll put it up there. I wrote this down. We grow by developing good habits, and your character, your character in Christ, is the sum total of your habits. The more you develop the habits, there's a direct correlation in some of the outcomes in which you become as a believer in Christ. I remember uh, during the shutdown, I did a multiple-week study on how to study the Bible. And these were like seven to ten-minute broadcasts that we did incrementally to show you some of the best ways to do Bible study. Uh, if, you, if you want to write growth on the back of your Connect card, we'll make sure that that's an opportunity for you to see a, as well. They're already available right now. If you go to our, our website, you, there, there's uh, something that's on our, our, um, our app. If you have the New Walk Church app, you can, you can read. There's a Bible reading part just connected to our, our app on, uh, that you can download, whether you have Google Play or you have an iOS device. You can make sure that you've got our app there and begin to do Bible reading, set up Bible devotion. These are tools. Again, I'm just sharing with you some of the tools that we partner with you on, that we offer you here at our church for growth. Here's the next thing in your notes. Spiritual growth is relational. And what I mean is one of the primary ways that we enhance our growth is in community. Growing with other people around us, growing together together. It's one of the biggest misunderstood things in the faith, especially in the American culture, American church. Here's what you hear people say. I don't need to grow as a believer to be at church, or uh, I don't have to be at church to grow as a believer. This is what people will say. I don't, uh, no, no, you know, I can do it right here at home. I'll just sit at home and listen to podcasts all day. Nope, that's not gonna cut it. If you believe in that, you believe a big fat lie And you are in error because you do not read your Scriptures. And the Scriptures tell you and I that there is a power in connecting through Bible study and connecting and growth together in the corporate setting and in a small group setting as well. You cannot grow without the connectivity of the church. You cannot grow without the connectivity of other believers. You can get a whole lot of head knowledge if you want, but head knowledge alone is not growth. The Bible tells us that we we grow when we grow in love. How do we grow in love? Loving God and loving others. Jesus said the two greatest commands are to love God and to love others. Uh, you, You can't fully love God until you learn connectivity and loving with others. You definitely can't love others sitting at home alone. And so, it is a huge part of what we do. I am so happy. First of all, we have a new round of small groups that's about to begin 
here at our church are fall around to small groups, and I'd love to have you sign up for those small groups, but here's what I know. Uh, probably over the next few weeks, a thousand people that call New Walk Church their home will sign up for a small group. That's pretty awesome, but here's what I know. About a thousand or more people that call New Walk Church their home will not. They won't sign up for a small group. They won't get into a group. And it's just like, you know, I just want to stay in my diapers. Look, there's two powerful parts the Bible talks about when it comes to the church experience and the Acts church. It's corporate worship, that is clear in the scriptures, and it's groups, smaller community together as well. They are both working in a healthy way together. Hebrews 10 uh, and verse 24 says, let us not be, cons- let us, look, let us be concerned for one another. All right, that's the focus on each other, helping one another to show love, to do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together with one another as some people are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more. Look, we can encourage each other in a big setting like this, but man, oh man, can we encourage each other even more in smaller settings. And that's why groups are so important. Uh, I mentioned before about our fall round of groups. Pastor Eddie has these little bracelets that sometimes we give out when groups are starting. There's some on the way out the doors today or outside. Uh, if you want to grab one, it's just a reminder about small groups and that, hey, I'm committed to being in a group. I'm going to make sure I sign up for a group. I'm going to make sure I attend to my group, not my group, not just sign up to be a part of my group. Grab one of those on the way out as a reminder of a commitment. Some of you are going to make that commitment here in our time together. Uh, you're going to write growth on the back of your connect card, but you're also going to write groups on the back of your message notes as a step that you know that you need to take to grow. Let me give you a little pro tip that I wrote in my notes about groups that I'll just share quietly with people here. We can't tell others about this, so we're just going to, people watching online, we're going to share this quietly. Here it is. Ready? In small groups, do you know who grows the most? The answer is the leader. Did you know that? Leaders grow the most because they're preaching and they're sharing, they're teaching, they're developing, they're cultivating their study. Now, I want to challenge some of you. You've been in group for a long time, but you've never decided to lead a small group. We've got a November small group training coming up. Maybe that's your next step, to be a part of a small group training. In the end, as believers, we've got to pour out. We've got to pour out to others. Eventually, that's the, the level of maturity we've got to get to, where we're bearing fruit in such a way that we're giving to others through serving, of course, through giving financially. That's a big deal. But giving and teaching as well. I love what it says uh, in the Scriptures. It says, by this time, it says this in Hebrews, by this time you ought to be, what? By this time you ought to be what? After some time of growth, I mean, it's time to find yourself as somebody who's teaching the Bible. You got to find yourself eventually as somebody who's pouring out into other people. You know, there's two seas that are prominent in Israel. In the northern side, there's the Sea of Galilee, and in the southern side, there's the Dead Sea. I've been to both of them, and let me tell you what we know about those, those two dif- different seas. First of all, the Sea of Galilee is more like a lake. It, it really is. In fact, there they call it a lake. All right, but the Sea of Galilee has this beautiful surroundings. There's fruits around the, the lake of the Sea of Galilee. There's, there's all kinds of development that happens around there in different ways, you know, especially development of the soils and things like that. It's very robust. And the Sea of Galilee flows southward, goes, flows to the Jordan, and it eventually it, that, that water from the Sea of Galilee flows into this southern sea in Israel. It's called the Dead Sea. One very vibrant sea and one very dead. You want to know what the difference is between the two? The Sea of Galilee pours out. The Dead Sea only sits and receives. And this is why we have so many churches that are not growing, people aren't growing into maturity because all they do is sit and receive. Let me have another podcast. Let me have another teaching. Let me have another Bible study. Let me sit, let me somebody receive. And what we have is a lot of people that are in churches and they're flabby Christians. They're out of shape. 
That's where, that's where we get the term, uh, uh, we get the holy rollers. They're just kind of rolling down the aisles spiritually because they're gaining this, this weight of knowledge, but they're not putting it into action and pouring out into other people. Here's the sixth thing in your notes. Spiritual growth is multidimensional. I won't spend a lot of time here, but the Bible says there are five purposes in the church that you need to find yourself connected in richly to grow. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm just going to give you these, but you can use these as an examination of how you're doing. Uh, I put in your notes, we grow warmer through fellowship. Connecting with people through fellowship. We grow deeper through discipleship. Church offers all of these. Our church does. We grow stronger through worship. We grow broader through ministry. And we grow larger through mission. You've got to be engaged in all five of these to, to be growing in a healthy way. And just like a physical therapist would say, okay, what area are you needing to put, get to work in to, to grow a little bit more spiritually uh, or to grow a little bit physically? He would say, okay, you say, okay, well, my knee needs a little work. And he would work that out so that you get a little strength in, in, in your knee. Well, the same thing is true spiritually. You say, okay, God, what is this uh, that I need to deal with in the spiritual realm in order to grow, in order to get strength, and you go to work? work on that particular area because you don't want that area to be unhealthy or lagging. Here's the last thing in your notes. Spiritual growth happens incarnationally. It's incarnational. Incarnate means Jesus, in essence it means Jesus in the flesh inside of you. It's, it, it's the incarnate part of Jesus living inside uh, of you. The, it, it's there and it becomes this active part of your life. Let me tell you why so many people are not growing spiritually. It's because, well, very simply, they don't have Jesus in them. You just don't. So for some of you, you're watching online, this is the first step. You, you need to invite Christ in you. Because everything that I'm talking about here doesn't happen in the human flesh. You're not going to grow through humanity. You're, you're going to grow through spiritual growth. It's going to grow through Jesus in you. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. I, am no, I no longer live. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live in my body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. You want to learn to love people well? It will happen with Christ in you. You want to learn to be kind to people? It will happen with Christ in you. You want to grow more spiritually? It'll happen with Christ in you. You want to live a more honest and truthful life? It will happen with Christ in you. You want to learn to keep your commitments? It happens with Christ in you. You want to trust God more in your life? It happens with Christ in you. You, 1 Peter 2, 24, Christ carried our sins in his body on a cross so that we'd be freed from our sins. We could live a life that would have God's approval. His wounds have healed you. Jesus Christ dies on the cross so that our sin could be forgiven and so that God could live inside of us. Christ could live inside of us and give us the power to grow spiritually. Would you write growth on the back of your connect card if God has prompted you to take a step today? Uh, would you write those steps on the back of your message notes if God has prompted you to, to make a step today? If you came in here today and spent an hour with me and you didn't have a desire to grow, you just wasted an hour. Congratulations. Don't waste that time coming in here. I've always believed that people want to grow if they're willing to give time at church. And I hope you're taking a step today. Would you bow your heads, pray with me online, here live. God, we're uh, praying, I believe, I'm praying for a, 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 an inward power and strength amongst people here in our audience to take some next steps, and it's different for everybody, that we would follow through, we would follow through on our next steps.
steps. People watching online, they're going to they're gonna commit to some steps here, growth, because we're going we're to find ourselves in a season of growth. It may not be a growth spurt, uh, but it might be some roots underground. It might be some seeds being planted in Jesus' name, calling on believers to take steps. And unbelievers, uh, maybe there's an unbeliever watching online or here live. I'm quite sure there are people in our audience here, and uh, you are an unbeliever. Uh, you can begin the first step, which is to say, Christ in me. Would you invite him into your life, what Jesus Christ did on the cross, the forgiveness of your sins so that you could be freed, so that you could have forgiveness, salvation in the name of of Jesus Christ. Would you invite him in and say, God, today I trust, I believe in the name of Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection. God, I invite you into my life and surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thank you, those of you watching online. So glad you joined us. Those of you that are live with us, thanks for joining us as well. Shannon's going to close us out. Amen. that. Drop it in the buckets as you go. As a reminder, it is group season. There's only two weeks left to sign up for groups, and it's our way it's for you guys to get plugged in and connected. So stop by the connect area outside. Grab a wristband, if nothing else. Uh, and then, of course, prayer. You know, we have our prayer teams available here at the end. And if I could just say this, prayer is so important. And I wish I prayed as a teenager the way that I pray now because I genuinely believe my life would look a lot different because I've seen the Lord move in so many different ways. And it's a privilege when we get to pray for other people and see him answer those prayers as well. So you can text the phone number on the screens or you can just come up here and talk to one of our prayer team at the end of service and they would love to pray with you. Last thing I get to talk about is giving. And first and foremost, thank you to all of you who faithfully give here at New Walk. We so appreciate it. We get to do service because of you. But more importantly, God has given us all so much. And just that little bit that we get to give back to him is truly a privilege and an honor. So I'm gonna pray for our giving right now and then you can just take those envelopes and drop them in the buckets as you leave. But will you pray with me? God, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we are so thankful, so thankful, Lord for the ways that you've blessed us. So thankful that you are in our lives. So thankful that you are constant. And God, I just pray that this offering tonight, that you take it and you use it to build your kingdom, to bring more lives to know you, and that you use each and every one of us along that process. We thank you so much for who you are. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right. We hope to see you guys next weekend. Have a great night, New Walk.